the iconic London black cab. Everybody knows what one looks like. Well, this is the very, very latest iteration. And if you think it's quiet, it's not because Peter, our driver, is whispering. It's because it's an all-electric black cab. Just on the market, just beginning to be looked at closely by the trade. Peter, you've been a cabbie for quite a long time. What do you think of the new car? So good, I can't, I can't go forever about it, honestly. Right, so you're a committed fan. Are, are you actually uh, using it on the on the roads of the, I've been the using capital city? This vehicle now, this particular one, for two months exactly today. How do you um, you find it in terms of your fares? Do they notice how different that is? Do they notice that it's an all electric car? Um, they're getting noticed more and more. Yeah, it is. We're actually getting to the stages now where people are familiar that these are out on the road, and they are actually standing back and waiting for one of these to come along. As long as it's not too busy, there's not so much of a shortage. That's interesting that, that people are actually selecting the vehicle and choosing to, to ride in an electric cab. Notoriously, cabbies are, are, are of entrenched views and, and fairly resistant to change, but what do your colleagues think about it? Are you, are you finding that more and more are going to switch the over? opinion is certainly changing there as time goes on. In the earlier stages, there was criticism, but now that they're actually out, drivers are actually working, and there's over 100 on the road now, Words getting around at just how good they are, and the opinion is certainly starting to change. Now, I'm, I'm sure this is a question you're frequently asked, but um, I know cab fares have been pinched a bit in recent years, and a lot of cabbies have come out of the trade because they can't earn enough money. Presumably the upfront cost is, is greater, or is it broadly comparable with the uh, existing vehicles? Well, the existing vehicle, the last ones that I was sold at just over £45,000. Um, these starts at just over 55, I believe. Get the top of the range model for about 58. So that's not not a huge difference. The difference in the price, obviously, is when you put a, a battery in a vehicle, it's going to cost a lot more money. But if you've also got a range extender and on the bonnet as well, um, if you run by juice, the range extender will cut in, so you've got no range anxiety. That's another few thousand pounds there, obviously. Mm. And the build quality then of this is. It's not spots on the previous week. We really, really don't. Yeah, I must admit, I am impressed just sitting in it. I mean, I've in and out of a lot of cabs over the years. This is very, very nicely put together. UK build? It is UK built, yes. It's built in Coventry, a uh, brand new plant in uh, Anstey, Coventry. So it sounds to me like a British success story. Uh, they're always good to hear. It really is a success. So that's in terms of the, of the running costs and the savings. You would get your additional outlay back in just over a couple of years, I'd say, depending on how you drive, when you drive. Personally, I would. Personally, I would. I save a lot of money over the course of five days in this vehicle. Well, thank you, Peter. That's Peter Powell. Thank you, Peter, for the conversation and for the rides. Now, I'm very glad you hadn't put the meter on because I know you've gone around three or four times more. <laughs> Thanks for your time, Peter. That's, that's, that's my pleasure. Thanks very much.